in the cabbage. Welcome to In the Cabbage. This is crazy. This is, this is pretty bananas right now <laughs> that we're actually doing this. I'm Tommy Sway. Andrew Witt. Please subscribe. Please listen. Please download. Like. So just a reminder, keep swinging. in the cabbage i'm your boy tommy swain to my right or your left andrew witt hello friends episode number two on the youtube some say we're goaded now and we should stop doing this but we're not going to some may say but we're back baby we don't uh, want to jump the gun here but that's what the people have been murmuring the lot of, a lot of people <laughs> those sturdy people in the episode murmured saying sure. it might be the greatest podcast sure. of all time are these people maybe only in the room as we speak now Maybe. Maybe. Could they be elsewhere? Possibly. Very, very much of a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, how was the weekend, buddy? It was good, dude. It was good. A um, little bit of a late start here to the week as far as our podcast is going. But like, dude, solid, solid weekend. I feel like we're just always just so slammed and booked up. Always. Yeah, it always. feels that way. Um, when you My get to calendar is age, just littered with dots. Yeah, like the those, shared calendar. The thing. shared calendar littered with those dots, dude. Oh, I think there's next this month every Sunday I have something going on. Yeah, it's crazy, and uh, a lot crazy. of it's golf, which is you know not a bad thing. Never apologize for greatness, right there. Not a bad thing at all. A no. lot of golf. Um, anything else going on that weekend? What um, else going on? I will have to say. Went to uh, Fable and Spirit. Oh, yeah. Over in Lido. Um, Newport. I mean, thank thank goodness for for a gift card or else, like, my ass ain't going there. Like, <laughs> no. It's But you know what, though? Honestly, it's not too bad. It's not too bad as far as price-wise, but do they deliver on the food? They absolutely do. It's yeah, delicious. It's really, really good stuff. Really good. Um, we got a pizza. Mm-hmm. Without any meat on it, actually. That was a little interesting. And it was one of the best pizzas I've had. I think it was because I never eat cheese. So burrata was on there. And I was just kind of in heaven. You just forget how good cheese is. Would burrata mess your stomach up? Probably. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, burrata get you good. Oh, yeah. What's the top three cheeses that mess you up the most? Cream cheese, number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> Cream cheese will do me absolutely <laughs> dirty. Oh, no. not the, Why cream cheese? It's just got the most... It's got, the, it's got the most lactose lactase in it. I love cream cheese. I do too. I, it's I can smother it on everything. It's cream cheese, sour cream, brie, double cream brie, ice cream. Really get you? Yeah. All those are a little bit more of a softer cheese that have very creamy textures. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's nowhere close It's war in the to, toilet. It, Pretty much so. Yeah. Yeah. Call me Picasso. Just I'm painting just only paint brown. the bull. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> man. That's tough. Um, it's either that or I'm just popping pillies throughout the entire meal. Yeah. The lactose pills. At some point, those things have to like wear off the effectiveness, right? No. No, they don't. It's like, you know, like Advil. You take too much Advil. No. no. I, I mean, I God, I hope not because then I'm just going to be losing all sorts of joy in my life in the, in the food realm. <laughs> Yeah, dairy was a tough one. I mean, I feel like most of the products in my home is just dairy. Yeah. I, I know. Have, everything has dairy in it. I come over to your place and I go and like grab something to eat and you have a couple things laid out or like, you know, in mm -hmm. the fridge and it's like, can't really have that. Can't really have that. Right. And so I just brought over a bottle of lactose for the, uh, the, for, the for the lactart over yeah. here, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, I don't blame you. But um, so yeah. pizza was fire. Pizza Barata. was fire. We got some, um, uh, I'm blanking on it, hamachi, which was like eh, kind of just eh. Mm -hmm. uh, just hot take here. Maybe it's not a hot take because you're probably going to agree with me with this. Pokey nachos or like any kind of like pokey appetizer, any kind of raw fish appetizer is always overpriced and never fully delivers for me. It just kind of lacks a little bit. I would say normally, yes, I'm with you. Um, I love ceviche. That's another thing, though. I love ceviche. Oh, my God. Ceviche appetizer is great. Mm -hmm. um, they have a hamachi crudo at um, Chalk in Tustin. Okay. 
really fire. Okay. Really different. Because you can do a lot of, because Hamachi is like really like like a light fish. Mm -hmm. Generally, I know yeah. yours is probably a little bit fishier. Um, so you can do really interesting like sauces with it. Yeah. And it kind of picks the flavor in. So yeah. if, as long as you got something going like that. But I agree. Most of the time I wouldn't say fish is yeah. an appetizer is that great. Yeah. Katie loves them. Really? Katie loves I, I Honestly, I I love them as well. But if you want to keep it a little bit more on the cheaper side and fill you up, mm -hmm. it's just tough when you're like splurging 25 bucks for like six pieces of like sashimi. It's like, okay. Tough. It's interesting. It looks pretty. It's great. It just fully doesn't, you know, doesn't really drive it home for me. Yeah, I agree with you. I can um, see that. So, but anyways, that was still a good dish. And then we got some like green curry cauliflower that was roasted with some... Um, dude, I'm just, I'm really dropping the ball Har here on Har it. Harissa? Uh, yes, there we go. Harissa. But it was a green Harissa. Never had fire. that before. It was more of like a chimichurri kind of blended up. Mm -hmm. Not so much bringing on the, the spice. Nice. You know? Um, what was your favorite dish? The porchetta was just unbelievable. There it is. That was the one right there. So it's like they roll it up, right? Yep. And they fry, they like. Crisp it up on the outside. Exactly. Normally they like oven well, cook it. Actually, it wasn't. It wasn't like crunchy on the outside though. But it, they smoked it for twelve hours. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. I haven't heard and that it was before. like this different kind of pork that I've never heard of before. And it's called curabata. I've heard of that pork before. Okay. Recent, and, not like a lot, but it's like a crazy it's, pork. It's kind of like the American wagyu of like pork, right. essentially. And boy, did this thing absolutely slap. And it had a chimichurri on there. Mm -hmm. Fatty piece of meat, chimichurri, that's slow roasted or smoked. Sign me up all day. You yeah. you, you got me. Okay? Have you ever been to a Texas, um, how, like a Texas, like not Texas, Brazilian barbecue Steakhouse? place? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I, I could see you just absolutely loving that. It's a lot, though. I'm not a big fan of cream barbecue. That's another thing, too. So it's like I don't need all of those, like, meats. I really just like a good variety of, like, fresh flavors and vegetables with some, like, good proteins. Yeah, I think that's the vibe you should be doing at those places. We yeah. should go one time. I'm down. It's a, It was fun. I went to one Texas State Brazil. And that was fire. Okay. And Irvine. Do they have like the little paddles where you're like green, keep uh -huh. bringing the, keep bringing the goods. Keep bringing the heat. You yeah. know, we went for lunch uh, a while back and it was like 40 bucks for lunch. Go for lunch? Mm -hmm. Your day's over after that. Yeah, but it was nice kind of because you would like fast during the day. You wouldn't okay. have like a huge dinner uh, or you have something small for breakfast and then um, it's cheaper. But all the same, they like, only miss a couple of meats. So you still get, you know, they also have like a strategy to it. Yeah. Right. You know, like the picante, which is like their version of like the steak, which is a fire cut of meat. Um, What's, is it picanha? Picanha. Thank okay. you. Picanha, which is like has a, a huge fat cap at the top. Yeah. Isn't that, sir, is it sirloin? But they cut it differently. Yeah. I think you're right. But I it's think, just so good. And they only, and I feel like they, so I was watching, so I was sitting right next to the glass where all the fire was happening. Yeah. I think they know they can't over serve certain proteins to you. Yeah, they right? do. Right? Because do. like the steak would be like, they would, you would kill them on the steak. They, they would make their money back if you ate pork and chicken. Yeah. Not so much if you ate a bunch of steak. So they're saving and they're rolling out the red carpet way later in the meal. Well, they go, they hit you with like chicken, pork, then steak comes around, get you a couple meats in. And then they disappear from the steak forever. <laughs> and you never get to see that thing again. But still, all like the other stuff around there, it's so fire. It just reminded me, you were talking about chimichurri. Yeah. Because I just got scoops of chimichurri on that thing and just was so good. Yeah. That's one of the most, that's one of the most goaded sauces right there. That is all time. So that was one of the cool places because I would definitely go back. My other favorite thing, um, I'm not really a big cocktail guy. They deliver on the cocktails, Fable mm -hmm. and Spirit do. I got a Seeking Perfection, and I was trying to find the drink because I couldn't find it on the drink menu, but it was like a rye whiskey. But basically, it was a play on um, Kobe Bryant and Ode to Kobe Bryant because it came out with blackberries that were like dusted in gold and a purplish hue to their drink. So like little purple and gold for like Lakers. And I was like, that's really dope. And then it tasted amazing. I could suck down... Uh, you know, good 12 of you those. You definitely suck down a lot of things, oh, can't yeah. you, buddy? A lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> 
open up the whole throat and just let and let it just zero you know, gag reflex and just let those things let, just shower let, in. Yeah, the co- cocktails <laughs> for me, just in general, uh, can really make a meal. Yeah, I just it was love really a good, good cocktail bar, and it, fortunately, it's like you know, fifteen dollars, sixteen dollars for a cocktail. Can we can we cool it on the pricing on everything? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Especially cocktails, though. Let me have two drinks at dinner and not maybe feel super guilty about it. Yeah, and your bill comes what up if, to like $210. What if, we, what if we did something where it was a buy one, get one half off? They have that, like happy hours at like Mastro's. I know, but that's happy hour. Can we make it? Like a whole thing? Let's make everything happy. Well, I think the reason why they don't is because they make a majority of their money back on booze. Right, so like they really don't make that. Most restaurants don't make a lot of money on their food. Yeah. They make their money back plus some, depending yeah. on the place. A lot of their money comes from the I, drinks. I forget that you uh, worked at a restaurant, but that's that's the classic like cost. Right, because you can buy a bottle and they can make X amount of drinks that you charge. You know, make your money back after yeah. four or five cocktails. Right. But yeah, I mean that's that's the bummer of it. But I, I mean, I always when I look at a restaurant and they have a great drink menu. The cocktails look really good. You can almost guarantee the food's going to follow up on it. Mm-hmm. The other great cocktail was at Little Little Sisters, and it was the Black Mamba. That margarita slaps. Yeah, dude. Little Sister has some great cocktails. Slaps. I love man. Cock- I want to go to like a um, cocktail um, tasting. There's I saw some fun. in Orange County recently or in LA where there's, yeah. it's instead of like you go to a food tasting where they do like a coursed out meal, they do like cocktail tastings. We should go to one of those. Yeah. So you go and you just get a bunch of cocktails, but you know we gotta definitely have to Uber, which is let's get Tommy drunk. No problem, I'll be <laughs> toasted. <laughs> Papa isn't the same uh, I, animal anymore. Yeah, but you get yourself at a cocktail tasting. Oh yeah, boys coming to play. Yeah, I'm gonna be feeling myself. Yeah, for sure. I really want to start getting into cocktail making, making a bag, big batch cocktails for like a party or something. There's a page on Instagram, Thirsty Whale, I think it's called. He's got some good stuff on there, and he like does some batch cocktails mm-hmm. and does some unique cocktails. It's it, his like collection and array of like all the stuff that he has is actually just extraordinary and baffling. It's, what he has, it's, it's crazy, crazy how like niche you can get on YouTube with mm-hmm. certain things and like yeah. watching. Like, it feels like if you have a question or wanting to watch something, it definitely can be found on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. You know? um, anything else you did this weekend, bud? Um, you know, I had like a had a good hang with the cousin and his gal. Nice. Um, bro, I need to learn how to make and figure out a, a pressure cooker. Yeah, right. I really need to figure that shit out because I blew it once on a pot roast and buried it in the back of the of the closet. <laughs> never to be seen again. Because I'm it's like, a, I'm like so, a one pot or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like the pressure cooker. Like yeah. the one pot. I don't know. I don't know what it's I'm called. Sure. It's probably got dust and shit all over it now. It was Who like knows? that hot. Like it was like the air fryer came out and then this thing followed up behind it. Right? Yeah, dude. And uh, it, it's great because my mom busted out some short ribs mm-hmm. and cranked out some braised short ribs in 45 minutes. And it was dynamite. Dynamite. That's and you, awesome. you, then you get some great cuts of beef and you turn it into something better. You don't have to like work for hours and hours and hours. Right. And I'm like, I need to figure that one out. Um, also got some shabu shabu hot pot. Have you done that before? I think I asked you. That. Um, I can't remember. I haven't. I maybe I did. <laughs> My mom and I had no clue what it was. <laughs> so we walked in. I think we did the spectrum or the kaleidoscope. Yeah. And this is before like it became like insanely popular, like with the white culture and become, you know, really, really popular. Right. Oh, look what we're doing. We're right. dipping in meats and right. hot, hot, into hot sauce over here. Yeah. So we, we ordered it and it looked like it came in like a soup. You know, we thought, and yeah. they gave you everything on the side. And you're like, and you're like, so we just make our own bowls of soup. Oh, you threw everything in? We threw everything no. in. <laughs> and just ate it like soup. But it's boiling though. Yeah, we just turn it off. And if you like wanted to oh. reheat it, we just reheat it up. You probably look so white. So white. <laughs> so, so but white. I mean, it was more of a white restaurant, so no one really right. bugged us. Right. And I well, I looked around and I was trying to get the vibe. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. But it also kind of makes sense. Like if you just want the soup always hot, you can like turn down the heater. Right. But that's not what you're supposed to be doing. The Yeah, it's fun because it, it ends up being a much longer eating process. 
Yeah. Because you're like semi cooking things and you're kind of moving things around and you got to like cool things down because you can easily destroy the inside of your mouth. Yeah, you turn you gotta, that thing up. Yeah, yeah, you got to be like walking on eggshells over there with with the with the mouth. So yeah, got to hang out with a couple of buddies, Matt and Jordan, on Saturday. That was cool. I haven't seen them in a while. So a lot of food, a lot, a lot of food. Of this food, a lot weekend, of, lot of really good food. Um, so that was great. What about you, dude? I don't even know why I did. Um, I think you guys are just kind of hanging a little bit. Yeah, we cleaned the house up, classic house chores things, which was nice. Uh, set the, I mean, very grown up stuff. Set the taxes in, got the taxes going. Oh God. Um, which is so boring to talk about, <laughs> but uh, other than that, like, uh, watch some Rainbow Six. They had their major okay. championship. Nice. Uh, which is a video game, and that was fun to watch. It's a game that we're all getting into now and playing a lot of. So it was cool to see some professionals at it. And it's it's funny how um esports is in like a very weird place right now. Yeah. So this game has gone through waves of like popularity, right? <clears throat> but it's like very much a game that stayed the same. They just update pieces of it. Which historically now, if you look at it, is the most successful way of doing an esport. Having a core game and adding elements and people and guns and maps to this core game in order to, like, you know, evolve it into something. So there gets waves of popularity. Right now, there's a streamer who's very popular on Twitch who's blown the game back up. Okay. So now there's a huge influx of people nice. coming back to the game. And it always happens when other games are starting to fail. Like, um, Counter-Strike right now is in a weird place because it's a new game. Yeah, then they bring out the second one, and it's not quite... It's the same. It's, not it's, quite the same it. it's the same maps, but it's different feel. They updated the graphics. So it'll take some take some, take, take some time to... Up, <laughs> wow. Take some time to update and um, get to a place where it can start... Start being, rolling again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it will. Um, Call of Duty is in a shit can right now. Yeah, it's bad. Um, I mean, the game itself isn't too bad, but I mean, the eSport might get disbanded altogether and get picked crazy. up by something else. Because uh, it's something that could be so, so massive. And it's something that I am getting into more now because one, you're talking about it more mm -hmm. and they're starting to publicize it and you can view it on YouTube and it's very accessible. I just don't see a lot of marketing for it. So if I were to see more of it, I'd probably watch more of it because I, think, I only know about it mm -hmm. when you tell me about it. I follow Optic Gaming, mm -hmm. but that's about it. Twitter is a huge place for esports. Yeah, okay. So if, you, if you're interested in, if you're playing a video game out there and you're thinking, wow, this is really great, I could probably find something with it being professionally done. Um, that's just the history of video games. It's every, if you're playing it, someone's doing it competitively. I don't think esports is a huge market. And that's part of the problem with the esports organizations is that they were selling it as this, the next big thing. And it's very niche. It's very hard to understand what exactly is going on if you don't play the game. So, and therefore it's, not going to grab the same attention like a football or a yeah. basketball or a baseball where it's very easy to understand. And it's also been a part of the culture forever. Do I think that esports can get there? Definitely. But it's going to take a massive undertaking from a developer perspective and for the right amount of buzz and people and, yeah. and uh, entertainment to be there. And esports are extremely popular as a subculture. So I don't think there needs to be this huge main, you know, vibe to it. Like, you know, there's over 100,000 people watching, you know, some sort of game. Yeah. And that's plenty. It's a lot of bodies, you know? It um, is. It is. I don't think you need to go to a place that requires you to have every eye. I think you need to update. You need to find the right game. But anyways, Call of Duty right now um, has a league like baseball, like MLB. And an owner is suing the league for male practice, like basically fraudulent charges and stuff of that nature. Gotcha. And that league might get disbanded. Now, that doesn't mean the whole esports dead, especially Call of Duty being one of the top. Someone else will pick it up. Like I was saying, someone else will pick it up. And um, from there, it will, you know, live on through another organization. I think 
that won't be an issue at all. I do think they'll find value in it. But other than that, moving on to, you know, I just hung out, played video games, did the whole thing. Nice. Let's, move, let's talk to, let's talk some golf here. Um, I'm over live. <laughs> I yeah. know we say, I know we say it all the time. I know we constantly come in here and live this, live that. Like PGA Tour players have now officially stopped talking about it. And it's great. Like they don't really talk about Liv and what Liv's doing, what Liv's got going on. They just, if someone asks them a question, they answer the question and then they move on from the topic. Now, yeah, that's how it should be. Liv can't shut their mouth about the PGA Tour. Yeah. And how unfair it is that they get to do the majors and that the global, you know, ranking system won't come and rank Liv players because they don't do, they're not under the same restrictions as you know other organizations and they're doing everything right so they should be ranked guys you took a fucking risk you said i don't give a shit about the tournament i don't care about the pga tour and at first you knew the majors weren't even going to be an option yeah you took a risk you took a bag to play less yeah. golf and, and get make paid more money. and get paid more yeah get paid more so shut up yeah, and you're more spo- you're more so specifically talking about Taylor Gooch with yeah. Rory McIlroy. And just in general, I was hearing we could touch on that real quick. So Taylor Gooch on a interview, the the person who was interviewing him did lead to the questioning of do you think Rory McIlroy winning a tournament, the Masters giving him the Grand Slam, would have an asterisk on it if the best players in the world, all of them aren't there. Basically led him into the question, which made him kind of say yes. Right. Regardless, it's dumb for you to think that if Rory McIlroy wins the Masters, that you or Bryson DeChambeau or whoever the hell else isn't there is going to have an asterisk on it. It won't at all. Period. It, like People aren't going to look back in history and be like, well, Tiger Woods didn't have Phil Mickelson whatever at the Masters at one time because he had a hurt back. That's not how golf is. Right. It's you still have to go out there and win. And the and top competition is there. So maybe Brooks Kepka won't be there. He probably will be. But, you know, you can't just say that because some of your players are not there that, you know, it's an asterisk. It's a crazy comment. It is wild. I don't really fully understand it because you can also get invited to the Masters. You can go and play outside tournaments, outside of live, gain more points, and they could qualify you and offer you a spot in the tournament. Yeah, that's what Joaquin Neiman did, correct? Exactly. It's exactly what Joaquin Neiman did. He went and did the tour, um, yep. the European tour. I forget what it's called. Yeah, the DP. DP tour. Won, won it twice or something and won a couple other ones and got yeah. some points and was able to qualify. Right. So I don't understand how Liv is like standing on this soapbox like, you know. There are different ways. And the way that you're playing over in Liv, because it's like a team event, it's a different format. So you can't Three be, rounds, not four. Yeah, exactly. So unless the governing body of the world golf rankings and points changes then I don't really think that you have any say because you knew about that when you signed up for it. You knew the risk you were taking, but you didn't care. So fucking strap the shoes on. That's Rub fine. the dirt off your knees. It's clearly working, though, because what we're doing is they're creating a little bit of buzz, and they're throwing their name out there, and they're always making these crazy-ass claims, and we're getting they're getting us to talk about them. Well, you know, that's great. I'm glad. But at the same time, it's just... I'm done. I don't know. It it. makes you look soft. I'm happy to talk about live in positive aspects. Like, have a great tournament, have a great turnaround. You know, maybe the team event starts picking up. I don't think the way you guys are running the tournament, it's going to work. I think you should do like four teams, more bodies on each team. I don't think the amount of teams you have makes sense. Um, now, like, there's a guy named Anthony Kim who joined. Yeah. Which are you going to go into his story a bit? Um, who's now just a wild card, whatever that means. So he's just playing the solo event, not even the team event, I think. So yeah. he gets placed. I think that's kind of a cool thing. That is the one positive about Liv. Right. And we can spin this right now and jump a little bit into this segment because Anthony Kim, for 
I never, I didn't see him play a lot because he was a little bit on the younger side when he won because he won a lot when he was like 21, 22, 23, maybe up until he's like 26. But I think he won like five or six times on the PGA Tour. Was um, one of the most electric as far as like personality and kind of swagger. Um, it was really cool because he's also just an Asian golfer on the right. PGA Tour. He's got these like big belt buckles and like kind of this like long, crazy, flowy hair. And he kind of just did things with some swag and he could putt. He's got a super flowy swing. I mean, his swing is just like butter. It's so beautiful. And the good thing about Liv is that they're able to offer these solo positions to just about anyone that they want to. And they can bring back whoever they want, essentially. They could right. even have Jack Nicholas if they wanted to. Come he back and play. Come back and play card. in a solo event as a wild card. Maybe there are some restrictions that I'm not too familiar about, but it sounds like they can just bring in anyone that they want and then just pay them for a few events. And if they do well, then that's going to be a positive thing that one gets a comeback story mm -hmm. or give someone a rebound chance. And then they can maybe work their way into a team and someone can pick them up as an alternate, something of that sort. So I do think that there are positives about Liv that no one's really harping on. I guess you get a lot of like the the chirping on like the social media. That's going to get some buzz. Yeah. But let's get some more of that like story building stuff about getting some more other athletes out there. Um, I'm curious to see because Anthony Kim is going to be playing this year. Sorry, this weekend. Mm -hmm. Do you know potentially actually where the tournament is being I held? I do not. I think it's out of the country this time. Okay. I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't know. No clue. Um, I don't want cool. to guess. But so. anyways, so he was blowing up and was super successful when he was younger. Um, but eventually just got a, like a bunch of injuries. I don't know what injuries, maybe wrist, maybe knee, back. Um, but has worked his way, I think it's, he said, like 11 or 12 years since his last round of Yeah, 11 golf. years was his last yeah. professional round of golf. Um, I don't think... Um, if you really look at it, it um, he may have been injuries. I bet you it was mental. Yeah, it was. They, uh, I think it was uh, Dan Rappenport from Four Play Golf was saying that he had like the driver yips, big time driver yips, where he had like two fairways around. Yeah, was, like, like it was getting to a place where he couldn't figure it out. And, and he looks like a guy who doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, uh, hearing his interview, he's like, he didn't say he missed golf. He said he missed competitive golf. Mm -hmm. And he has a very choice, choice words there. I don't miss golf. I miss competitive golf, yeah. which is like, okay. It's very, like, you know, captivating in the way he speaks and comes in with so much swagger. Um, I'm, you know, I'm probably going to watch just to see how he plays because his swing is so crazy. But... Overall, man, I, I mean, it, it seems cool that they can bring these people back, but Liv is just needs to just be Liv. Yeah. Just do you guys. Your rank, the ranking systems will get figured out at some point. This was part of the risk you took um, being one of these organizations sure. that, you know, you know, blew it to the side. And I don't, I don't find it being an issue at all with, you know, the ranking system's not validating you as a league. You've, you're you a new league. You've been there for... A year and a half, two years. Two years going on three. Like, yeah. why should they validate you as world rankings, especially when you don't follow four rounds, cut lines? Right, what those regulations are. Right. For but, sure. You know... I want to I wanna switch gears really quickly because I, I do remember what I wanted to bring up to you and talk to you about. And it was the tournament over in Mexico for the PGA Tour. So we're going to switch over to the more captivating league in my in our, in our opinion eyes. in our opinion yeah um there was a local boy to us home course costa mesa really jake knapp put on a pretty much sensational tournament where he shot like 63 64 63 finished the last day with like a, a level par 71 72 round but it was really cool because they had a Costa Mesa watch party with his family. 
and he was like the coast of Mesa, Mesa Linda golf course. He shot his career low 58 there. Crazy. I'm like, whoa, dude, that's kind of sick. This guy's swing is super buttery as well. Yeah, he has a really flowy swing. It's really dope. Um, if we didn't check out any of the golf tournament this past weekend because it was like not a not so big one, right. not a lot of like, you know, main guys were playing in it. All good, but I caught a little bit of it as well. Uh, Jake Knapp is definitely a guy to look out for. Um, has a very unique story. He was on the Corn Ferry Tour trying to work his way onto the PGA Tour and kind of like lost, you know, his like, you know, his like will to get better. And he mm -hmm. kind of just like, eh, I'm losing some money. I'm not seeing any like, you know, traction here. Right. Goes and bounces for a little while. And kind of like, I don't know if he totally gives up or if he's kind of just like half in, half out on the whole golf situation. Um, but then eventually after that, he's like, no, nah, I, I firmly believe that now I want to make golf my career. So it takes him to a little bit of a lower place to then bring him back and realize that, no, I do want to play golf. So now he's got, you know, his home team for hockey is the Ducks. Yeah, he's, he's, our, he's one of our local guys. He's one of our boys, and he's um, a pretty physical specimen as well. Um, so it's 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 got the he's got the mullet type look going on too. Seems like he's a really personable guy and a guy I, you want to root for. I would love to see his uh, see him around Costa Mesa. That track is tough to play, so it's it's interesting to see him in grass range, big putting green. I don't really know there's much chipping or bunker area around there. Yeah. For the work. I don't, I don't think so. That's his home track. That's where he goes and practices and stuff. Not now, but that's what the one he grew up playing. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, oh, he goes there now still? That's crazy. Yeah, no. Because I haven't seen, I think I would have seen someone slapping the ball around. He is residing in Scottsdale, actually. Now. Yeah. Nice. That's, um. where would you want to live if you were a professional golfer? Well, the obvious one and clear choice is in Florida. Right. In Jupiter. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I would want to be cookie cutter Jupiter. I would maybe want to go live in like a Virginia or someplace like really cool. So maybe, where the taxes are nice and cheap. Maybe. Just to be a little different though. Right. I don't know. That sounds I would, nice. I would go put me right, right in Jupiter. I know. I know. Put me, put me right with the game. I was trying to be unique. Put me right Jupiter's. with the Gators, right next to Tiger Woods, where I can, you know, swing freely. And, and they've got so many country clubs and so cool many private courses. courses. And they've got lakes and all that. And the weather's great all, all the time. Yeah. And the rain, like when it does rain, it comes in spurts sometimes. You can sneak it's out. It's really not even that bad. And you make enough money where your home simulator is unreal. So you don't have to worry about it as much. But uh, it would be that. Um, I could maybe do an Arizona, maybe do a, maybe do another Southern California, but yeah, it's Florida, dude. That's gotta be Florida, right? I mean, that's yeah. pretty, pretty all time. Um, speaking of a little, you know, golf and moving on a little bit in the cabbage stuff, um, you know, just wanted to give talking a lot of job stuff recently with people and um, just finding value and how I can maybe help you know, younger generations or my brother or, you know, when I have kids one day, how to maybe start working a career in this day and age. Well, um, I believe now that base pay, which is amazing, isn't all you should be looking for now for a new job. Like, not always should you be looking for the most high dollar value, but you should mainly be looking for great titles, and what I mean by that is, like, if you can be an executive recruiter, a full desk recruiter, or your title as account manager, like, you're going to have more success later down the road if your title is account manager. And so maybe if you're starting off, start looking for titles that maybe be more advantageous to you. Um, even if the company is a stellar, you know, maybe the company isn't where you want to be for very long. But they're willing to offer you like a marketing manager title. Yeah, maybe it's fifty thousand. But you're a marketing manager, right? You're like, okay, hold up now. Well, you know, that's my title. Maybe I'm not getting paid like a marketing manager, but it's something to maybe hang your hat on 
and when you start looking for new jobs, you have that, you know, um, it's yeah. something to, you know, a little chew on for I agree. Other people. Um, I, I, yeah, every single job that is in the upper tier of like senior analyst or, you know, head marketing, like that you're talking about or manager of any mm-hmm. sorts, you need what they want is they other companies always put at least five years of experience in a manager role, five years of experience managing accounts, right? Five years of managing a team, seven years, 10 years, whatever it is, you know, working with clients and all that kind of stuff. It's so hard to get and obtain all of that experience when you're going to get all of those titles potentially usually later in life. Yeah. 40, 45, 50. That's when you'd start begin be- becoming an account manager that would maybe be um, and getting that experience then move on and move forward into the um, the higher pays and the bigger careers of of what you're trying to do in, in for, for your career and jobs. Yeah, so, I think it's important to, you know, look for titles like we kind of said. And also just um, trying to really beef up that resume. Yeah, beef it up as much as you can. Yeah. Also, like, I don't know how necessary college is going to be when we start having children. So true. Um, Everything's becoming so niche. Yeah, it's... Um, I heard a while ago when I was, like, drunk or something, I was watching a YouTube video, and they were talking about the future marketplace and what it's going to look like. And then someone said uh, gig economy. Okay. Meaning, basically... You're going to have to have more gigs than you are like starting a uh, one role and fully finishing it out. Like you know, my parents or your parents or whatever would have a job for 15 years, 20 years, or whatever, and build a full career out of it. Like that's just definitely not um, our generation. We're more going to be a gig. And you think that jobs are going to be more of. Uh two to four year stints. I think, that I think that's where thinking? it's leaning, but also just um, maybe you have a fashion, you know, uh, brand. Uh, I see. And, but it doesn't pay you all that you need. And then maybe you have to do door dashing on the side. And then also you have to be a bartender. Like, I don't know if where we need to get, it's only going to be provided by one company anymore. Yeah. And also in college, like if my kid wa- walked up to me and was like, you know, dad, I want to be a marketing person. Well, like they don't need to go to college for marketing. No. Like I would m- much rather them go to whatever ABC company and go get an internship and learn and have the experience. So when they went to the next step, they have that. I, I bet you it's easy to c- easier to convince a company about your education not being there, but the experience there. And your education being high and your experience about not being there. Yeah. I'd be interested the more that um, I guess you could scroll through LinkedIn. And I wonder what the requirements are for certain positions. You always see like GED, you know, whatever, some high school level education, college grad. But like, I don't know how realistic that even needs to be. Right. Because you know, they're DeVry and they're not caring. Because also, if you if you didn't have a college degree, but you're 12 years in the business and you have all that experience, they're probably just going to forego that. Yeah, if you come in to apply to a job and you're 22 years old and you've been working with a marketing company since the age of 18, you're three or four years in and you have you know proven track record of good work, I don't think they're going to care. No, I don't think so. Um, awesome, man. This is a good take. Yeah. Just a little food for thought. God, I love people food. out there. I'm getting hungry. Getting a little jealous over there. Yeah. We got we got <laughs> Catherine over here just munching on some some session sessions inspiring oh. us. Se- sandwiches do sound good later. Yeah, yeah for the workout we had sandwiches. All right, buddy. Well, you got anything for the people? Um you the laptop's gonna make my life really difficult with this video edit. Let me tell you that. And you know what? If it's a little bit choppy, there was a little bit of a un- unforeseen blip. In one of the uh, the scenes a little bit earlier, just but know we're working out the kinks, baby. We're working out the kinks. <laughs> we're working baby. out the kinks one at a time. We're sorry for that. Episode two was was perfect. Nothing wrong with that. You know little what? technical difficulties. We're just we, we're we just, are using a Dell that might be fourteen years old, and you know that that is on us. But at some point, we won't be. 
But you know what? We are we we're looking for sponsors. You know, yeah, and our applications are wide open. Wide open. Send it on over to us. <laughs> We'll so, sponsor glass blowers, you know, if we want to do that. Oh, that'd be cool. Have you ever seen the Netflix show Blow? What? Have you ever seen the Netflix? No, it's I have like not. a glass blowing competition. That sounds awesome. It is pretty cool. I would love to blow glass one time. That right over there, that little vase, that's mm-hmm. a that's a glass blown, blown glass. Did you blown blow it glass? yourself? Glass blown vase. No. No, I did not. I got it gifted to me. That's pretty cool. Does someone else blow it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Love okay. blown things. That's what I got for the people. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. We're here. Always going to be because we're in the cabbage. And just a reminder, keep swinging.